Hey everybody, Neil here. This is a quick test number four. We had a bunch of people asking about crosstalk tests, so I'll just give it a shot. Again, I'm not a laboratory. I'm just uh, running in my studio here, so this is just a real world sort of test. And my test bench is this. I have a sine wave generator, and uh, I can assign it to one of four channels, which are the four channels on a cat cable. I have those four channels being fed from my DAX. They're going to my producer's desk. The BAX is in hardware bypass. This is just the cables um, connected into each other. Basically, I'm just creating that 50-foot pathway with the uh, CAT5 cable I have. And the input of this is coming back into these four scopes. And we can just monitor and see how it looks. So let's just give this a go. Um, this is uh, a one kilohertz tone. Right now, it's feeding out output number one, which is this top scope. This is two, three, four. Let's uh, take a look. So there's my 1K tone, starting at minus 96 decibel FS. And let's just creep it up here and see what we see. Ah, so I'm starting to see a little bit of crosstalk here, but it's way down there. Look how low that is. There's that harmonic distortion we saw from video number three, really low spec anyway, it doesn't matter. And uh, so now we're at zero dBFS. This is full scale. This is loud as hell. Um, and there's our harmonic distortion. And then here's crosstalk on channel two, three, and four. So it looks like we're down, what is that? Like around minus 110 dB. So that looks okay. Let's, uh, let's just see how this looks if I switch this to output two. All right, so got a little bit of crosstalk going into number one, three and four, but these are still really low. Uh, let's uh, go to number three. So a teeny bit, and then number four, same kind of thing. Still all below 100 dB. So let's do a sign sweep. This is uh, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz at zero dBFS. Like this is explodey speaker time levels, uh, pushing all the electronics to the limit. Uh, let's see what we see. This is going on uh, channel one. And this is over a duration of five seconds. So you can see a little bit of crosstalk bleeding through. Let's uh, route this to uh, output two. So it looks like the one and two pair or the three and four pair bleed over the most. And I don't know if that's just uh, the way QTP cable works, but this is an absolute worst case scenario. I don't think it's a realistic scenario. Like let's go down to minus 18. And you can see that it's barely blipping the scale now. Like this is, so low down. Eh, I don't think this matters, to be honest. Let's uh, turn this off. And I'm just going to play this track through uh, outputs uh, one and two. Um, I don't know if you've heard this song, Gunship, Berserker. Sounds awesome. So let's, this is a real world scope of some mastered music. And these are the kind of levels you're looking at here. And uh, look at our channel three and four. I think that looks good. Uh, let me uh, flip this to three and four. So we can look at one and two. I think our crosstalk is okay. This is the Cat5 cable. And let's just do uh, channel four. And then we'll do channel three. Channel two. Channel one. This all looks good to me. I'm no scientist, but uh, this is well below anything I can hear. And if I can't hear it, that's good. So just like the last test, I'm not gonna test all four cable variants. I know how they've all worked out. Um, I just wanna try a shielded twisted pair version of this just to see if that helps with crosstalk at all. So I'm gonna try the lower tier version of that that I had, which is the CAT6 SDP. This is uh, the crosstalk test with the CAT6 
shielded twisted pair cable. And uh, so, same thing as before, nothing's changed. I've just uh, run longer cable. So this is 100 feet of uh, STP Cat 6 running these audio signals. So same thing as before, I have my sine wave generator at one kilohertz, and we're just gonna creep this in on output and input number one, and see what happens. And nothing will happen because, yeah, I should probably just turn this on. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna creep it on. Here's our zero dB FS, one kilohertz sine wave, which is insanely hot. And seeing the same amount of crosstalk here, Let's go to output number two. Yeah, I'm not seeing too much difference here. Look at this. It does seem, though, that, you know, a 3-4 or a 1-2 pair react with each other. Like, if there's signal on number four... We're getting the most crosstalk on number three. And uh, if I put it on number three, we get more crosstalk on number four than one and two. And the same sort of idea on two. One is more pronounced than three and four. I put one. That's more pronounced than this. Let's go to the sweep. Let's take a look. So it's, this is looking the same to me as before. Let's go to output number two. Output number three. I'm not seeing any difference here that would warrant spending extra money on the shielded twisted pair, to be honest. And this is an extra 50 feet versus the first test. And also remember, like, if we're on a test tone at 0 dB FS, at 1K, or anything even above that, this is ridiculously loud. It's not a real-world thing to worry about with this kind of crosstalk, because, you know, a 5.4 kilohertz signal isn't going to be at 0 dB. It might be down here at, like, minus 30. And then our crosstalk is at, like, minus... 130 or whatever so you know what i mean like yeah i'm not seeing anything to worry about here let's uh, just play that track again this is um gunship berserker it's a great sounding track so we'll put this on uh, output one and we're not seeing anything here to get sad about or worried about let's put it on output two are we getting contamination in three and four no nope. looks fine let's put it on output three one, two, and four look fine. Let's put it on output four. One, two, and three look fine. Yeah. So based on all this, I think I've come to my conclusion. I don't see any benefit in getting the CAT6 cable, even the basic shielded twisted pair. That CAT5 UTP cable looks pretty much exactly the same. I'm not seeing any benefit of getting this cable. And this cable's thicker and harder to work with, whereas those CAT5 ones are less coily, so you can make a big clump of them a lot easier and move them around and maneuver them a lot easier. And that's what I need to do, snaking them around my room. So that's the decision. So I'm going to go order a bunch of CAT5 cable. Very exciting. And this is the CAT5 UTP cable. Now I can kind of put this chapter of testing to bed and I can get back to music making and sound design stuff. I'll do a video patching a whole bunch of processors. Let's hear how this all sounds. Let's hear how it all works with the patch app using the Patch XT. Really excited now that everything is uh, falling into place. So talk to you soon. Happy Friday, everybody. And uh, hopefully the next time my voice won't be a cold voice. In a world where Neil does not have a cold voice, he will sound like the normal dork he always was. Next time.